Well, there's that trout, chunky little planter. Couldn't lay off that gold spoon, and uh, looks like my dad's gonna be eating good tonight. We'll see if he fish on. Woo! All right. Woo! There we go. Nice clean trout. Nice rainbow there on the spoon. Cool deal. Real, 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 real. I'm reeling. Oh. Nice! Wow! Wow! Beautiful fish! What teamwork! What a fish! That's what you come to Lake Elmanor for. Look at that incredible rainbow. We'll get a closer look at that. We got tangled lines. Oh. Now my wife Gina, she's a little shy. She doesn't want to be on camera. Look at that beast she just caught. Look at that amazing fish. That's every bit of five pounds. That's what you come to Lake Elmanor for. We've been up here for two days. We've had three strikes. But one fish is over three, and one fish is over five. What an incredible fish. Look at the girth on that. I have big hands. I can't nearly get my hand around that fish. That fish was on my lead core rig. He was uh, about eight feet. Girls, anglers everywhere, I'm Kel Kellogg. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna talk about trolling spoons. Trolling spoons for trout, and we're gonna consider the meaning of spoon size. Before I get into that though, let's talk a little bit, you know, in, in broader terms. When we're out fishing, whether we're fishing for trout or, you know, bass fishing's a great example, there's two kinds of strikes we're typically trying to elicit from the fish. We're trying to, in some cases, match the hatch, match what the fish are feeding on very closely, match that, present those feeding fish with something that looks very similar to what they're feeding on at the time. They see it, they grab it, they think it's something good to eat. Fish on, happy angler. We're happy, happy guys or gals, okay? The other type of strike we try to elicit from fish is a reaction strike. We try to present them with something that is reminiscent of a food source that they may or may not be feeding on at the time. And we try to present it to them typically pretty quickly so they don't have a lot of time to think about it and they react or some small percentage of the fish we present it to react, grab the lure, and it's fish on. Great example of this is, is from the bass fishing world. You know, sometimes early in the morning, the bass guys will go out and they'll have on a stick bait, a rip bait. They'll cast that up on structure. They'll crank it down under the surface and they'll just work that rod tip hard. Boom, 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 real, real, real. Boom, 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 real, real, real. They're trying to elicit a reaction strike from fish that have moved up on the structure and are looking to feed. They may or may not be feeding on minnows at the time, but they see that fast moving plug, it's stopping, it's starting, it looks crippled and they react and you know, bam, fish on. Contrast that with a bass guy who's got on, you know, a latex skirted jig. He's got it tipped with a, either a plastic crawdad or a piece of pork rind. He's casting that out. He's inching it along the bottom. Well, he's trying to imitate a crawfish at times when bass are eating crawfish. The bass sees that slow moving, you know, object, identifies it as a crawfish and says, wow, look at that crawfish. I think I'll eat them. In that case, the bass angler has, you know, quote unquote, match the hatch. The bass was looking for crawfish. He saw a crawfish. He ate the crawfish. Boom, bass on, okay? So when we get back, you know, getting back to trout fishing, and we think about trout spoons, one way to approach spoon choice is to match the spoon to the hatch. If we're at a lake like maybe Berryessa or Folsom or even Collins Lake, and we know there's thread fed shad in the lake, and we know they're mature, the fish are feeding on them, maybe the surface temperature is, you know, 60 degrees, so the trout are really active, we might match a spoon with the size of the shad, put it in the zone, and we're gonna fool those fish into thinking that they're seeing a shad, we're gonna match that hatch, and we're gonna catch a bunch of trout. Unfortunately, while we might know that any given lake is a, is a thread fin shad lake or a pond smelt lake, unless we see the bait or, or the fish spit up some bait or we have a long history of fishing the lake and we know 
the size of the bait at any given time, it's gonna be hard for us to exactly match the size of the spoon to the size of the bait. Sometimes, you know, this trigger spoon magnum is a great imitation of shad when the shad are large, but at other times, we might have to use a trigger spoon junior like that to imitate small shad or small pond smelt, something like that. So without knowing the actual size of the bait, kind of the match, the hash philosophy is kind of out the window. And that brings us to my main way of using spoons when I'm out trout trolling. For me, in most situations, the size of the spoon that I choose is a function of the speed that I'm trolling. This gets back to the trout trolling pyramid. You can access that, that material here on the channel. It's on a thread of its own called the trout trolling pyramid. But uh, basically, I advocate a system that calls for you to hit the water in the morning if you're unfamiliar with the lake or you haven't fished the lake in a long time. Start out fast and gradually slow down as you have to to get strikes. First thing in the morning when you start out, you're really scouting. You're scouting with fast moving spoons or plugs in the water, typically spoons, sometimes flies, usually a mix of all of the above because you never know what the trout are hitting on any given day, but you're trolling quickly anywhere from 2.7 to three and a half miles an hour. You're, you're taking mental notes. Are fish jumping? Are you seeing fish on the sonar? Where are the fish hiding? Maybe you catch a few, maybe you don't. But as the bite changes throughout the days, if you're catching fish on, you know, big, bold, fast moving spoons and suddenly that bite, you know, changes and you're not getting hit anymore, or, or maybe you marked a bunch of fish that you couldn't get to hit, but you have a pretty good idea on some areas that are holding trout, that's when you start to progressively move slower and you progressively go to smaller and smaller spoons or other lures. So let's take a look at my spoon selection, talk about speeds, and uh, I'll, I'll take you step through step how that speed and size progression goes you know, when I'm out on a lake. Now, if I'm up at a lake, maybe in the high Sierras, maybe even here in the valley, and I wanna get going in the morning, I wanna get going fast, I might choose one of my speed spoons, or I might choose a Magnum trigger spoon. And I'm gonna pull that lure anywhere from about 2.7 to three and a half miles an hour. I'm gonna maneuver the boat, I'm gonna hit the structure, I'm gonna sample a bunch of areas, I will probably catch a few fish on these larger spoons. Now, when, when I get sun on the water or the conditions go glassy, that bite is probably gonna slow down on the large spoons. Next stop is my standard size trigger spoons. Right here, I'm gonna run those anywhere from about 2.4 to 2.8 miles an hour. You can see that is a much more compact spoon than the Magnum. I'm gonna troll these in that 2.4 to 2.8 you know, speed range and take the temperature of the fish. Are they hitting it or do they like it? Are, are they hitting it half-heartedly? Are they not hitting it at all? Were they hitting it and they stopped hitting it? Well, that may be time to drop down in size and speed again. And I'm reaching for the Trigger Spoon Junior. You know, it might be a chartreuse one like that. I'm not really worried about color at this point. It might be a, a purple pro like that. It might even be one of my, you know, my, my Trigger Junior classics. Bottom line is, this is a spoon that I can run anywhere from about uh, 1.3 up to about two miles an hour. Target speed on the Junior, 1.8 miles an hour. So big stuff, 2.7 to three and a half. The standard trigger spoons, you know, 2.4 to 2.8. Trigger spoon junior, 1.3 up to two. Target speed, 1.8. And if the bite is really difficult and I really have to go to finesse tactics, I'm gonna break out my micro trigger spoons. They are T-tiny as you can see right there. Um, I'm gonna troll these anywhere from one mile an hour up to about 1.7, 1.8. That is a super compact finesse presentation for fish that are reluctant to go. It's a little morsel. It stays in the strike zone for an extended amount of time. It's not obtrusive. It doesn't scare the fish. It's something that they can easily grab and gulp down. So that's my basic philosophy. Start out big, bold, and fast. Work through the speed progression going ever slower 
And as you get slower, you want to downsize your lures. And uh, typically, throughout that progression, somewhere in that speed and size progression, you are going to get on a pretty good bite. And be aware that the bite can change throughout the day. Maybe you started off with magnums and you did well. There was no sun on the water and you had some chop. Things slowed down. You started getting them on, you know, standard triggers or trigger spoon juniors while it was glassy, while the sun was high. And all of a sudden we're up in the Sierras and we get a bunch of wind after lunch. The wind's blowing hard. Very often we can go right back to the big spoons, go back to speed trolling and get after those fish once again. I hope that clears up the, uh, the, the aspect of spoon selection and presentation speed for me. As I said, most of the time, spoon size is a function of the speed that I'm trolling. You know, this is uh, the Trout Trolling Pyramid 101. Start off big, bold, and fast, slow down as you have to, and as you slow down, downsize your spoons, and that's gonna put you on the fish. You're gonna be yelling fish on. I'm Kel Kellogg, I'm out of here for now. Catch me again right here on YouTube, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.